Welcome to our podcast, where we bring together three influential thinkers of the past, Karl Marx, Antonio Gramsci, and Frantz Fanon, to discuss the ongoing crisis in Sudan. As we know, the outbreak of heavy fighting in Sudan has caused dismay all over the world, but it was no surprise to the population of the Northeast African military dictatorship. Indeed, the Sudanese crisis is a classic example of the contradictions of capitalism, where the interests of the ruling class clash with those of the working class. The Sudanese generals who hold political and economic power are driven by the need to protect their wealth and privileges, while the masses of the Sudanese people suffer from poverty and deprivation. Absolutely, Carl. And as we know, the Sudanese crisis is not just an economic or political crisis, but a crisis of hegemony. The Sudanese generals have lost their legitimacy in the eyes of the people, and the popular protests that have been going on for a year and a half have challenged their authority. This is a classic example of what I call a crisis of hegemony, a situation where the ruling class can no longer rule in the old way, and the masses are not yet able to take power. And let's not forget the role of imperialism in the Sudanese crisis. As we know, foreign governments were not uninvolved in the Sudanese meltdown. The United Nations, represented in Sudan by the German diplomat Volker Perthes, the African Union and the Arab League, loudly celebrated the signing of the Framework Agreement, with which the military and some civil society groups wanted to end the dictatorship of the generals once again at the beginning of December. Yes, France. And as we know, imperialism has always played a destructive role in the African continent, exploiting its resources and keeping its people in poverty. The plans by Russia to build a military base near the port of Bur Sudan on the Red Sea are a clear example of this. And let's not forget the role of the Sudanese elites in this crisis. The wealthy Sudanese, who owes their wealth to illegal gold deals, among other things, slips several hundred million U.S. dollars into the central bank in order to avoid a meltdown of the Sudanese pound. This shows how the ruling class in Sudan is willing to sacrifice the interests of the people for their own selfish gains. Absolutely, Antonio. And the worst thing that could happen now is that Sudan's people will be forced from abroad to abide to the rule of one of the two generals. It is already clear who that will probably be. In addition to his Egyptian friends, Al-Burhan also has friends in the United Arab Emirates and Israel who are interested in the fertile lands in the Sahel state. Yes, France. And this is a classic example of how imperialism uses local elites to maintain its control over the resources of the African continent. The Sudanese crisis is a reminder that the struggle for emancipation and freedom is not just a national struggle, but a global struggle against imperialism and neo-colonial forces. And the struggle must be based on the unity of the working class and the oppressed masses, transcending ethnic and religious divides. The Sudanese crisis shows the importance of building a popular front that can unite all those who are fighting against imperialism. Absolutely. And let's not forget the role of revolutionary theory in this struggle. The works of Marx, Gramsci, and others provide us with the tools to understand the contradictions of capitalism and imperialism, and to build a strategy for revolutionary change. Thank you for your insights, gentlemen. It's been a fascinating discussion. In conclusion, the Sudanese crisis is a reminder of the urgent need to build a movement that can challenge the power of the ruling class and fight for a better world.